and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is AP Calculus. We are working through the, the book that is put out by uh, Prentice Hall. It is the Finney Demana Waits Kennedy Calculus book. We are actually beginning our last chapter for the AB course that we do here at the U. And uh, we are starting to do the chapter on uh, basically applications of integrals. And I just want to kind of draw your attention to a few things as we start this chapter. Uh, this first section, uh, although, you know, it's going to use words like displacement and distance and things like that, uh, some of those words are familiar, some of those words are probably not familiar, and if not from physics, then even from our class. Uh, what I did was I grabbed a, an image of uh, from Sanford Flip Math back in 3.4, where we did some applications of uh, derivatives, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this, but just a reminder that we, we've talked about velocity, acceleration, and things like that, and remember that velocity, acceleration, those are derivatives of a position graph. Okay, so if I do the derivative of position to get velocity, then to reverse that process, it should make sense that I, if I do the antiderivative of velocity, I would do the antiderivative and get back to position. Now, and similarly for acceleration, the antiderivative of acceleration should get you back to velocity, and the antiderivative of velocity, again, is back to position. Uh, we saw this again uh, in section 5.1 when we were uh, starting to talk about what integrals mean and area and things like that. And so just want to, again, draw your attention here. Uh, the area between the velocity time graph and the x-axis is distance. And we happen to do some approximating there with uh, LRAM and RRAM and, and MIDRAM and even trapezoidal rule at some point. And so I just want to kind of draw your attention to that so that those relationships will still hold. Uh, so the antiderivative of velocity is distance. And uh, similarly, the derivative then uh, of distance will be velocity. Etc. Okay, we're going to do a fair amount of work from the book and directly from the book. So I'm going to actually kind of just bring the book up. This is uh, this is from section seven one. This is on page 386 in the in the book that I described earlier, the Finney Demana Waits Kennedy book. And we're going to do some problems from this, and uh, I'm going to specifically look at uh, some of the evens since we uh, tend to have you have answers for the odd ones in the back. And uh, what I'm going to do is grab that equation, so 6 sine of 3t, okay, and we'll just kind of bring it over here. Uh, so this is velocity. Okay, so this is velocity. This is, this is not position. This is velocity, 6 sine of 3t. Okay, very good. And what the question asks us to do is identify when is this thing moving to the right, when is it moving to the left, and when is it stopped. Uh, so let's do that first, and this is all about velocity, and we're assuming that the left and the right uh, follow the normal conventions, so when th velocity is positive, it's going to the right, when it's negative, it's going to the left, and when it's stopped is when it's zero, okay? So I think the easiest way to do this kind of problem is to look at maybe a sign chart. Just an idea. So this will be T, this will be V, okay, and so we want to know when is it equal, uh, and now before I get too all excited about this, I need to also look at that we're talking about from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, that's kind of important. Okay, so let's for the original problem. Okay, and let me just double check that that's what the inequality signs looked like. Yes, or equal to. Very good. Okay, sorry to pop back and forth so much. Okay, so I need to know what's going on at t equals 0. I need to know what's going on at t equals pi over 2, okay, and shockingly enough, this is all in radians, okay, and uh, I need to know also what's going on in between there. Now, hmm, 3t, so, I don't know, it's probably worth taking a look at maybe a graph for this thing and uh, seeing what's going on, so let's, let's bring up a calculator. So I think this can be done without a calculator, you know, but it, it's obviously going to be a little more work, so 6 sine of 3t. Well, the calculator is really set up to work with x, so we'll just put in 6 sine of 3x. And working on a standard screen, this is what it looks like. I'm in radians, and that just looks like a lot of mumbo-jumbo. 
I'm interested in from 0 to pi over 2. Now, generally I go to the little to the left and right of what I'm interested in, but I, I think it might be useful just to do what it is, okay? And I don't know, how do you want a number? Um, I guess I'll just leave it by ones. I don't know, let's, yeah, let's leave it. Okay, and let's hit graph and see how this looks. Okay, so I'm going from 0 to pi over 2. Wow, that's really close to 1 it crosses. Okay, so worth noting that this is a graph of V. V of T, if you prefer. So here's T and there's V of T. Um, it's 0 at 0. And it's also, the velocity is 0 at this point. So the question is, what is this point? Well, maybe a little tracing would do. And I'm just going to get a quick idea and then see if I can kind of figure it out from there. It's probably too far. No, not quite. Okay. 1.036. Well, isn't that beautiful? 1.05. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll see what happens here. Um, let's let's go back. So there was one. There were two spots where it was zero uh, at zero. Uh, it was actually negative here. Okay. In fact, we can. And then at 1.0 something, well, I'm interested in knowing where is this equal to 0. Uh, so sine of 3t equals 0. Well, sine is 0 at 0 and pi and 2 pi, etc. So that would, in this case, that would mean 3t is equal to, because I'd be doing the sine of 3t. So that should mean t is 0 over 3, and pi over 3, and 2 pi over 3. Okay, so now again, I'm only looking at between 0 and pi over 2, so this isn't it. Pi over 3, is that the number I just saw? That's, that's my question, and this is a whole bunch of trig stuff going on here. Okay, let me uh, get rid of that ink. Okay, um, what did I just say? Pi over 3, right? Pi divided by 3. I think that's that number I just saw. So I'm going to go with that. So so pi over 0 and pi over 3. So the other number here would be pi over 3. And again, the velocity for that is 0. Okay. Now, taking a quick look at the graph, since I can get all the rest of the information. Okay, so this is pi over 3. Sorry, that's supposed to be a pi. The velocity here is positive because it's above. The velocity here is negative because it's below. So that's that's kind of handy. I could have tested points. Um, so I'll say positive and negative. And so this is well, not not including zero. Sorry. Zero pi over three, not brackets. Pi over three, pi over two. Okay. All right, so where is it moving to the right? Well, where the velocity is positive. So from 0 seconds to pi over 3 seconds. Where is it moving to the left? Well, it's from pi over 3 seconds, because the velocity is negative, to pi over 2. Where is it stopped? Well, it is stopped when the velocity is 0, so at uh, 0 seconds, and also at pi over 3 seconds. So now the question becomes, what is the displacement? Displacement is distance. Displacement is, if I start here, and I stop here, this distance is displacement. So how is that different from, from total distance travel? Well, this is how it's different. Start and stop. Displacement has no idea how far you really traveled. It's the net change in distance. For instance, if I start here and I go all the way over here and come back, the displacement is still this. If I start here and I go here and then I come back and then I go here and then I come back and then I go here and then I come back and then I stop right here at that distance, the displacement is still this. All it looks at is where did you start and where did you stop. It does not say how far you really traveled. Okay, so all you do for displacement is an antiderivative. Okay, so for an in, for instance, uh, 
So let, let's talk concept for a second. If I go to this, this means I'm going forward, 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 now I stop, and I'm backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. I went farther forward than I backed up. So my net change in distance is going to be a positive net change because there's more of the positive area than there is negative area. Okay? And again, all that can be found by doing an antiderivative. Okay? So let, let's do that. We're going to do the antiderivative from when do I start to when do I finish. And I believe that was 6 sine of 3t. Yep. 6 sine of 3t dt. So this is the setup. This needs to be here. <coughs> And so we're just going to do an antiderivative. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Um, antiderivative of sine. Now, there's a little bit of a u substitution thing here, but again, we've done this before, so I don't really think it's a big deal. Think of this as sine of kt. Okay, now the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. It will be of 3t over 3. And that deals with the u substitution whole thing. There should be a 6 involved here, okay, so 6 times, and you can write that in a lot of different ways, and then we're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so let's, let's kind of finish this little bad boy up. Okay, so this all ends up being negative 6 over 3, well, I don't really need to write negative 6 then, because it's over 3, so negative 2 cosine... 3t, evaluate it again from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so I'm going to do um, negative 2. I, I'm just going to distribute that or pull it out so I don't have to do it twice. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus cosine of 3 times 0, which is equal to negative 2. Well, cosine of 3 pi over 2, just a, a reminder that cosine, this is 3 pi over 2, this is 2 pi. So cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. But cosine of 0 is 1. Okay, so this is going to be negative 2 times uh, negative 1, because that's what I end up with inside there, so 2. Now, I don't think there were any units associated with this. Let's just take a peek. Uh, analytic methods, velocity in meters per second. Okay. Okay, so that was in the directions. Okay, so quick little note to self there, meters per second. So this is a distance. This is 2 meters. This is how much my ultimate, uh, ultimately my distance changed. Okay. So I don't know, you know, I, you know, we've already talked a little bit about this from the graph that it went forward for a while, and then it went back, but ultimately, it the real change was 2 meters. Okay, so now the question is, okay, let's go back to the list. Okay, so displacement, 2 meters. What is, uh, what is the final position if the starting position was at 3? Okay, so... So let's kind of get a little picture in our head here. Oh, sorry, too far. I have to, there we go. Okay, so if I start, here is 0, and I really start at 3, and then I move forward 2, then where I end is really at 5. Okay, so the final position is really whatever my starting position is plus my displacement. I mean, that shouldn't be a big deal. So it's 3 plus 2 equals 5 meters. Okay, and I think we just have one more question here, and I think I'm just going to let it be one example today. I really want to do more, but you guys will revolt on me. What is the total distance traveled? Okay, so again, we have already said that what we have done is we have gone forward, okay, and again, again this, this is at pi over 3. We have gone forward for a while, and then we backed up. So if I treated all of that like positive distance, so this is supposed to be positive distance, and this is supposed to be negative because we're going backwards. If I do absolute value of that and make it positive, how far did we really go? 
Okay, so if I have my little odometer going the whole time counting mileage, how far did I really go? Okay, well this goes back to what we did back in chapter 5 again. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to break this up. Well, this is what, how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go from 0 to pi over 3. Where'd that pi over 3 come from? Well, this is back to my sign chart. Remember, this is when we figured that out already. So I'm going to do the distance. Uh, uh, 3x, I believe it was. The x plus pi over 3 to pi over 2. Okay, and let me just double check that I remember the equation right. Oh, this is all supposed to be t, t sorry. It really doesn't matter, but uh, I want to be consistent. dt, t, dt, 6 sine 3 t dt. 6 sine 3 t dt, yep, there we go. Okay, so again, now this answer for this part would have been negative. So what I'm going to do is, again, I want all distances to be positive, so I'm going to force this to be positive. Okay, so now we've already done this antiderivative once. I really don't want to do it again. Uh, so it ends up, here, here it is, that's the simplified form, negative 2 cosine 3t. Okay, we're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 3. Plus, we're going to do the absolute value of 6, si I'm sorry, no, okay. antiderivative, negative 2. Okay, so again, this is absolute value because the answer from that little guy is supposed to be negative and we're going to make it positive. Okay, well, cosine of 3 times pi over 3 is the cosine of pi. That's negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 minus, okay, putting in 0 now for this, I'm going to do uh, negative 2. Now the cosine of 3 times 0 is, zero, is 1, excuse me. Okay, so just that little part alone. This is going to be 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay. Okay, continuing on with this, this guy now. So we're going to add absolute value. So 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to uh, cosine of 3 times pi over 2. Well, 3 pi over 2, if we already did this once, 3 pi over 2 cosine is 0. Okay, so this is going to be negative 2 times 0 minus, well, that was annoying, negative 2. Um, now, I'm going to have to do 3 times pi over 3, so th and I've already done this, so that's really pi, so that's negative 1. Okay, so this is really uh, 0 uh, minus, sorry, 0 minus 2, so negative 2, make it positive, so that's really going to be plus 2 or 6. So this is really 6 meters. So we didn't really travel, so, so again, so the idea here is, sorry to keep starting and stopping, we traveled forward two and uh, forward four and backwards two, ultimately we really did six meters. All right, I need to leave it at that, and thank you for watching. This is just one big ugly example of everything you need to do, and thank you for watching Sanford Flip Math, and signing off. Bye.